From the National Newsroom of the Canadian Press, I'm Jason White. Hundreds of people wearing orange shirts gathered on Parliament Hill for a ceremony honouring the survivors of Canada's residential school system, as well as the children who never made it home. Survivors and Indigenous leaders were among those attending the Ottawa event to mark the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. An estimated 6,000 children died while attending residential schools, but experts say the actual number could be much higher. The son of a Canadian couple killed during Israeli strikes on Lebanon last week says Ottawa has to do more to help citizens leave that country. Kamal Tabaja says his mother and father were trying to flee their southern Lebanon village last Monday when an Israeli bomb strike hit their car. He says the time for a government evacuation of Lebanon is now. Sending their own planes or boats or whatever it is, offering help to people. You know, my brother right now is telling me the, 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 the closest flight I can find is on the 11th or 12th of October, and that's not guaranteed. Global Affairs Canada has so far focused on securing seats for Canadians on the limited commercial flights that are still available. The union representing about 350 longshore workers at the Port of Montreal has begun a three-day strike. As Canadian press reporter Chris Reynolds explains, it's brought the transfer of goods from overseas to a grinding halt. It shut down container traffic at two large terminals here at the second largest port in the country. And uh, I think they handle just over 40% of container traffic through here. So we've got some goods languishing already, despite it being only a few hours into this, this strike. The Maritime Employers Association says it's tried all possible means of avoiding the strike and that neither mediation nor an emergency meeting with the Canada Industrial Relations Board were fruitful. In the U.S., the Biden administration says it's making asylum restrictions at the border with Mexico even tougher. The White House is trying to show voters it's taking a harder stance on border security. The new rules bar migrants from being granted asylum when U.S. officials deem the country's southern border is overwhelmed. Cutting food waste could cut greenhouse gas emissions, but a new study finds American states' attempts to cut the amount of food waste going into landfills are rarely succeeding. Only one out of the first five states with food waste laws, Massachusetts, has seen its law work. The findings matter because food waste is a major contributor to planet warming methane emissions. The researchers say Massachusetts law worked because the state has the most extensive composting network in the country. It keeps the rules simple and has the highest fines for non-compliance. Experts say the fines might be the most important ingredient for a successful food waste ban. I'm Haya Panjwani. This is the Canadian Press. In sports, the Vancouver Canucks and Edmonton Oilers continue their prep for the upcoming NHL season when they face off tonight in Alberta's capital. Also tonight in the NHL, Calgary hosts Seattle. Toronto Raptors team president Masai Ujiri is trying to lay to rest rumors he has friction with Edward Rogers. He says he has a, quote, great relationship with the Rogers Communications chair. Rogers is buying Bell Stake and Raptors owner Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment. Basketball Hall of Famer Dikem Mbe Mutombo has died at the age of 58 from brain cancer. In a 2015 interview with the Associated Press, he said it was an honor to be elected to the Basketball Hall of Fame. I'm fortunate and blessed to be able to play 18 years and see my name being called today. Mutombo was one of the best defensive players in NBA history and a longtime global ambassador for the game. From the Canadian Press. I'm Jason White. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to follow and subscribe. For more of today's top stories, visit the Canadian Press News.ca.